This is Ag Matters PM from the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network, brought to you by the Iowa Soybean Association. Your daily recap of the information that affects Iowa's farmers, producers, and consumers, right here in the heart of the heartland. With reports from our award-winning broadcast team of Dustin Hoffman, Riley Smith, and Mark Magnuson. Now, from the IARN studios in Des Moines, here's Riley Smith. Good day and welcome to Ag Matters PM from the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network. I'm Riley Smith. Today is Wednesday, August 28th of 2024. We're so glad you can join us for today's show. In today's episode, I talk with Greg Tramey of GSI as we take an overview of the grain view system, the convenience and also efficiency factors that it offers for producers. But before we get into any of that, AgMarket.net is here at the Farm Progress Show as well, so I went on over to their booth to visit with Jacob Burks for a check of those closing markets. It's time now for the Ag Matters PM Closing Market Summary, your source for market analysis and settlement prices from the day's trade in Chicago, courtesy of the folks at AgMarket.net. At the end of another trading day in the Ag Marketplace, we are here at the Farm Progress Show with Jacob Burks of AgMarket.net. Uh, Jacob, great to talk to you today. Uh, how do we see the grain markets end up? Well, uh, the, it's a farm progress show, but it was a lack of progress on the grain markets here. We saw another uh, two cents lower in the corn market after we uh, we stayed really quiet in the grain in the corn market all the day long. The beans, you know, overnight we were down lower, uh, came at the beginning of the day, like we've seen almost every day this week where we tried to rally at the open, tried to get the market uh, to have a little bit of recovery, and they just really gave it up today. The last two days, we've seen that, that rally stay uh, pretty stable and we closed higher, uh, but today we just couldn't keep the, uh, could keep the beans afloat. Well, we were talking about earlier it's it's almost been inopportune rallies in the in the yeah. soybeans particularly because they were down big from uh, market reports recently and then yep. they were still trying to go up so it's right. when we're looking at the opportunities for soybeans to maybe pick up some momentum again yeah i mean what are we looking at next that could provide some uh, just a little support well first of all we, we're, we're we're the market for the beans uh, globally we're just not exporting anything so we need to see the continued sales coming our way uh we're seeing a little bit at a time as we, as we go we're seeing uh, a few flash sales come in but those those reports need to get bigger yeah, and they need right. to keep coming and they need to come from the right people and when that beats China, we need to see them come in there and be aggressive with those beans. I mean, we saw the market rally in the face of a pro farmer report that said, hey, we're going to have more beans than we've ever seen before. Uh, so we saw, thought that was like, okay, optimistic that we could keep that, move, that, that rally going. Uh, but, you know, the weather market here this week, uh, you know, we finally, we finally gave up a little bit on the, the heat maybe being that detrimental. And I think that's what kind of weighed on the market as we went through the day. And then, Jacob, when we look at the livestock side of things, uh, obviously, I mean, not really as much of a focus right now just because sure. we're so heavy on the grains. But... How have the cattle and hogs been trading so far today? Well, if you, you start with hogs, I mean, the, the hog market kind of been a counter seasonal, seasonal trade here, right? Uh, we, we've seen the, the cutout kind of get blasted, but we've still seen stronger markets. And I think a lot of that uh, has to do with some outside money coming in. Whenever you talk about recessionary trade, if we're going to start seeing uh, the selling of the cattle, maybe selling of beef and buying of pork, maybe buying of poultry. But I, I think that's been the, the most positive thing for it. But I mean, right now, if you got to look at the hog market and be very uh, very happy, uh, especially if you're a producer uh, of, of, of hogs, to be able to get some risk management done there. Uh, the cattle, on the other hand, I think it's very imperative as you start to see uh, the basis level switch from being a positive basis as you go out in the future to a negative basis. And, and that, that's, that's kind of telling us right now that there's a lot of risk coming in that, in, in that cattle market and be very aggressive uh, and, and you know, pay attention to, to, to what you have on hand, what, how you're buying the cattle, uh, as well as risk management on the top end of that. And you know, we, we've heard a lot about the demand picture yep. lately too. And you know, we're approaching the end of that peak demand season. We've got Labor Day coming up this weekend. So you know, if we're already struggling with demand, we're getting to a period where demand usually comes off anyways. I mean, uh -huh. how is that uh, picture looking moving forward? Well, I think the, the, you kind of got two different markets here. You should be building some inventory going into the, the holiday season for the hams, and that really hasn't happened. And I think a lot of the, the lack of building in the cold storage has been from the fact that we don't anticipate exporting a whole lot. So that's one thing that could pick up, that if we get some back into the export market, uh, especially on the on, on the, the hog side of things, uh, and, and beef continue to build that type of uh, business, I think that would be very key. Domestically, uh, it feels like you're, 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 stay, you're staying above the $300 level in the box beef, which is huge. And, and, and that, I think, if we, if we start to see that pullback, uh, stock market stayed pretty well afloat. And if you looked at the charts between the live cattle and the stock market, they went in pretty good correlation. So uh, really, reality, uh, even though our, our dollar has been extremely high, if we could see that stock market stay strong, hopefully that's a, that would be a barrier to at least keep that, uh, uh, that live cattle from, from falling apart. 
All right, Jacob, lots of great information yep. for anyone who wants to get in touch with agmarket.net. On top of stopping by right. here at Farm Progress, uh, how can they get in touch? Hey, just look us up at agmarket.net. Do a free trial of our Intel. Uh, that's where all of our information comes from. We'd love to take a chance to talk to you. We're over here uh, at the 80, 8317 booth in the uh, very, very technologies. All right, Jacob, thanks again for taking the time to visit and good luck with the rest of the show. Uh, thanks for having me here. That again was Jacob Burks of agmarket.net. We'll take a look at how those numbers close through the market window at iwagnet.com. September corn down two even at 365 and a quarter. September soybeans down nine even at 958 and a half. September soybean meal down 650 at 310.80. Soybean oil up 65 cents at 41.80. Chicago wheat up six even at 514 and a quarter. Kansas City hard red wheat up six even as well at 544 and three quarters. Minneapolis spring wheat up eight and a quarter at 554 and a half. September oats up 16 and a quarter at 340 and a quarter. On the Merck, October live cattle down 77 cents at 178.62. September feeders down 62 at 241.30. October lean hogs down 40 at 81.67. Pork cutout went unchanged at 91.07. And September class three milk down 46 cents at 22.12. And that's been a check of the markets here on Ag Matters PM. We're going to go ahead and take a quick break to hear from our sponsor, the Iowa Soybean Association and the Soy Checkup. When we come back, I talk with Greg Tramey of GSI. This is Ag Matters PM. Iowa Soybean Association is driven to deliver for Iowa's 40,000 soybean farmers. We're proud to provide objective agronomic research, a helping hand with soil and water stewardship, and timely industry news powered by the Soybean Checkoff. Learn more at IASoybeans.com. Welcome back to Ag Matters PM on the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network. I'm Riley Smith. Innovation is at the forefront of the Farm Progress show, and there's plenty of that here at the GSI booth. On the show grounds, I had the chance to talk with Greg Tramey of GSI to preview the grain view system and talk about those convenience and efficiency factors that make it so appealing for farmers. Uh, a lot of traffic here at the Farm Progress Show today yeah. and you know that nice weather coming through and yeah. of course everybody is uh, here to see the latest technology in Farm Progress. That's kind of the big thing is the innovation. GSI, no stranger to any of that with the new technology. We've got the grain view system right behind us. Yep. Uh, Greg, tell us a little bit about GrainView and just uh, what farmers have been thinking as they've been stopping by here throughout the show. Sure, yeah, so GrainView is our grain bin monitoring product that allows us to monitor uh, temperature, moisture, and carbon dioxide levels or CO2 in the bin. And then it also provides us with an automation platform to where the farmer can either uh, turn on their bin fans remotely or they can fully turn that control over to the system, provide it with some information about what their goals and objectives are with the crop, and uh, the software will do its work and it'll choose to run the fans uh, when the weather conditions are correct to achieve that target that they're looking for. And of course, we know that the uh, you know air moisture management, temperature management, when it comes to the grain, highly, highly important. And there are a lot of times where, you know, here in Iowa, we've seen over this summer, that weather changes fast. It does. And when it comes to making sure that grain bin system is ready, you're not always there to be able to make that manual change to your ventilation. So having this system, I mean, automatically, if it can detect that stuff, uh, really a lot of peace of mind for farmers, right? It, it is, you know, when we, when we put that crop in the bin, we're really looking for a couple of things, right? We obviously wanna make sure that it stores safely, but sometimes we also need to change the moisture levels. Maybe we wanna decrease the moisture. We might wanna add moisture back to soybeans. And you mentioned the weather is variable a lot in the climates that we, uh, we grow a lot of grain in, even throughout a day. Sometimes the best times to run a fan might be overnight when we're sleeping. So when we add an automation package, we're monitoring what's going on with the grain inside the bin. We've got sensors on the outside that are monitoring the weather. The farmer has already told us what they want to do with that grain. So we can make that decision and say, yep, we now know that the weather is correct outside and we may run our fan from midnight to 6 a.m. and it may be time to shut it off during the day. And so when farmers try to do that without a system, they tend to miss a lot of those times when it's optimal. Um, or even if they just want to make those decisions themselves with a system like GrainView, they don't have to be at the farm. They could be going about their day doing whatever they want. If they pull out their phone and see it's a good time to turn the fans on, one click of a button, they've got the fans running back at the bin site from wherever they are. So when it comes to the GrainView system, having that integrated into your grain bin on your operation, what does that installation process look like first? Yeah, so that generally starts with a visit with your local GSI dealer. So they can... Um, kind of design and build the system of GrainView that's specific to your needs. It is a modular system, 
So we allow you to, maybe you only want to monitor a bin and you don't want the automation to try to get a lower cost point. You can do that. Um, or they can go full out and send you a full system with temperature, moisture, CO2, automation, if that's what you're looking for. They'll be able to go on, get that quoted to you, have that discussion to make sure it's the right product for you. And then uh, the installation is really a one day or less process in most of the bins on the farm. So they're gonna come out, they're gonna install the system and then do a little bit of electrical integration with the fans so that we can turn them off and on remotely. But it's a pretty simple process. Most bins, like I said, can be handled in one day or under. So then when it comes to, you know, you mentioned that customizable, uh, customizability when it comes to this, which is obviously a great thing to get those farmers into it because it can be a little daunting to suddenly get all of that technology on and then you have all this information at your fingertips, yes. what do I do with it? So when it comes to that, I'm sure usability, uh, making sure it's easy to get through that interface is probably a priority as well. Yeah, it absolutely is. So GrainView is gonna be available to you on any web-enabled device. So you can have it on your phone, your iPad, your computer, however you choose to wanna consume that. It's all gonna be available to you wherever you go. And it's really designed in that user-friendly type of a situation to where um, very intuitive to look at it, make those decisions. And then if a customer does have questions, they can always reach out to their GSI dealer. Um, we have some support people throughout the country that are dedicated to this product line. Um, they can call in and we have experts that understand grain storage and conditioning. And uh, you can call in, tell them what you're looking to do. They have access to the bins as well. They can take a look at it and have that conversation with you and really hone in on what are the right settings to get you to that objective that you're looking for. All right, Greg, lots of great information today. Is there anything else about the Grain View system that our listeners and viewers should know about today? No, I think as we as we continue to see these farms get bigger, more spread out, more grain that they're managing, it's really a tool that can help give you that peace of mind like you talked about um, in the beginning to know that everything is okay. And if something is going wrong, the system's gonna alert you and tell you so that you can deal with it right away and hopefully solve a small problem before it That again was Greg Tramey of GSI talking on the GrainView system. And that's all we have for today's episode of Ag Matters PM. Thanks again for tuning in. You can find all of our content on our website at iowaagnet.com. Also follow us on social media at Facebook, X, LinkedIn, and TikTok. And find our video content as well as previous episodes of AMPM on our YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell to see when those videos go live. Don't forget as well to check out our free morning, midday, and closing market podcast, as well as Pods Potential and the Iowa Ag Matters podcast. You can find those on your favorite podcasting service at Apple, Amazon, Spotify, and Podbean. From the Farm Progress Show in Boone, Iowa, I'm Riley Smith. On behalf of the IARN broadcasting crew, we thank you for watching. This has been Ag Matters PM.